Hello, River family. This is Pastor David Skinner. I'm really, really glad you're joining me today, tonight, this evening, yesterday, whenever you're joining me via online, whether it's good morning, good night, good day, middle of the night, whatever you're doing. We're just really glad that you're joining us today. So uh, we are having worship together, but uh, separately. So we're doing this online, and we're really, really thrilled that you're joining us. So I have a message today that hopefully will encourage you in this kind of crazy time that we're going through. Uh, we have a few things we want to make sure that you know about. First of all, obviously, we're not meeting this Sunday. We'll likely not be in person next Sunday as well. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we hope that the minute we get the green light that we are back together as a congregation, it's very weird to gather together and not be able to, to, to hug or to shake hands. It just doesn't even seem right. So we're hoping that we get the all clear pretty, pretty soon. We are also deeply in prayer for all those affected by the coronavirus and uh, ask that you as a church family band together praying specifically for the river that God would continue to protect us, but also that you pray for the world and all those that are deeply affected by this virus. I want you to know that our website has been revamped. It is amazing. Check it out. It is uh, still in process, but it is a, a, a thing of beauty. It is more interactive. You can contact us much more easily. So you can um, uh, get a hold of me or other people on the staff let us know if there's any needs. And we do want to let you know, if you have a need, if you are someone that is homebound, you're not able to get your groceries or any kind of issue like that, please contact us. We want to stay in ministry through this whole time. And we just pray that anybody you know that doesn't have a church home, send them a text, send them an email and say, hey, join us this Sunday from your fireside chair if you want and enjoy uh, the message. There's also, we want to encourage you to do this, and people have encouraged us that they are still wanting to make sure that they give uh, to the body of Christ and the ministry of Christ. There's three ways that you can give. Uh, the first one is the offering plate. That's really not relevant right now. So it's kind of hard to do that. But you can mail uh, a check or a money order into the river, and the address is 539 U.S. 83, Abilene, Texas, 79602. Or you can also uh, text, uh, you text in 84321, and that is where you can uh, give uh, on a secure text that way. Obviously, you can also uh, do it online. So you can go to theriverabilene.com, and you can uh, backslash, I believe it's give, and you can be able to give at that particular point. Would love for you to continue uh, helping us and being a part of the ministry that we are doing here at the river. Uh, also, all of our groups will be um, uh, canceled for a while until we get the green light on that. Uh, all groups meeting on the campus here are just kind of not meeting. Uh, the elders and I spent some time in prayer and really felt like it was the right thing to kind of pull the trigger and to not meet in person today. But let's act like we're in person. Give each other a high five, air five, and we love you in the name of Jesus. God bless. Over the past uh, few weeks, we have been talking about the concept of what's love got to do with it. And, and this idea is the fact that some of us struggle to believe that God could love us 
in our denseness, when we, when we don't know what's going on, when we're struggling, when uh, we're experiencing human finitude, and it, it just feels like we're in a fog or in a mist, and, and we just don't know what's going on. And we, we, sometimes we look at the Lord and we say, you know, I don't, I don't think the Lord can, can really love me in this, because there's this time I'm getting frustrated, and I'm getting angry, and I'm, I'm, I'm just not connecting with the Lord. Well, the news is, what's love got to do with it? That's the good news, is everything. Jesus still loves us and can walk us through specific points of really being kind of dense. You know, I've used the example of my puppy. Uh, her name is Sadie. Sadie does not know um, what's going on. Uh, yesterday, she brought my 80-year-old mother to uh, bleed via her hand by being a little rough. She just doesn't get it. She just does not get it yet. But here's the deal, is we still love her. We still want to be in relationship with her. We still want to train her and grow her up to be a great dog. Well, we're not dogs, but we feel like that the Lord has the same type of venue and understanding. He wants us to be in the venue of the body of Christ where we encounter His love and grace, even when we're dense, even when we don't understand it, even when it feels like we're walking through the fog. A few years back, actually several years back now, Back in 1980, there was a, a movie called The Mist. It was based in a Stephen King novel. And in The Mist, it's just this wacky, supernatural, scary movie about in the mist, you don't know what's going to happen to you. I, I believe a lot of us have felt this same way because we just don't know what's next. In today's text, you're going to find that there's lots of, and lots of people in this particular account, a lot of reading from the text, but there's lots and lots of people in this particular account today that just didn't get it. And yet, Jesus chose to carry out his kingdom work. We, we have a family farm, and I, I've been on the family farm hundreds of times. But I have found that a couple of three times when it was really, really misty, when it was kind of foggy, I can walk exactly where I thought I was right and be completely wrong. But there's one place where I always know I'm in the right location and I can know where everything else is. I'll tell you more about that later. But we're going to open in a word of prayer. And then we're going to be in the Gospel of John, verse or chapter 11. And we're going to go through several verses. I'm just going to give you some little snippets along the way. And we're going to talk about at least five places where people were walking in the mist, where they were confused. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to gather as a church online. Lord, we thank you for this uh, technology that you have given us uh, just the great opportunity to be together, even though we're not seeing each other face to face. So Lord, in, in the next few moments, I pray that the words from your scripture would encourage us challenge us to help us to know that your love is even bigger than our denseness or when we are experiencing finitude, when we just don't understand. Help us to be encouraged. And Lord, as for me, I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase to be our preacher and teacher today. In Jesus' name, amen. Starting in verse 1 of John, fourth book in the New Testament, John chapter 11. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany. Now, Bethany is very close to Jerusalem, somewhere around 1.7 to 2 miles from uh, Jerusalem. So there are a lot of trips. And this particular location has become Jesus' sort of home place where he does ministry out of here. The village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. We're actually going to talk about that next week. It's one of the most fascinating uh, stories and accounts in the scripture. So this is a dedicated group of people. Interestingly enough, Lazarus' name is Hebrew. Mary's name is Greek. Martha's name is Aramaic. So they have this weird sort of cross the board ethnic group here. They're all the same, but they have this different ethnic background in relation to their name origins. It's kind of a neat thing. So 
the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. And they're talking about Lazarus. The one you love is sick. So let's talk about the first point of mist. They are watching their, 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 their brother, and their brother is probably the means to a lot of their income. They are fairly well to do. They're connected with kind of higher up people in the Jerusalem area. But in this moment, they could be losing all stability in a culture that is predominantly male run. And they deeply love their brother. And they're living in the midst of confusion. They know Jesus. They know this amazing healer, this amazing lover, this amazing man of grace. But they're just scared to death of loss and death. I think a lot of us, when we're facing this, whenever we have this particular struggle, get very, very lost in the, in the, in the let's just call the heat of those moments. And it's hard to see God in the mist, in that foggy atmosphere. I, I uh, uh, had this encounter. My wife and I, Gina, our son, was injured pretty radically um, in his eighth grade year playing football. And in that moment, it was very hard to find God when you're so scared. Yet, in retrospect, we found him in several places. Are you, are you dealing with the mist of just not understanding because there's a loss or a death that's recent or on the horizon and it's consumed you and it's hard for you to believe that God would love you and touch you and forgive you and walk you through that? Let's keep going. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Notice for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, now some, this, this doesn't even sound right. When he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. That doesn't sound right to me. I think if somebody is really worried about somebody, they, they get on their camel and they ride, right? They get on home. They get on out of there. What's interesting is he chooses to remain two more days. Now, here's what we know. We think Jesus is approximately 100 miles away. We think that the journey from where he is back to Lazarus would take about four days. So the, whoever brought the message to Jesus traveled four days. Lazarus appears to be well at that particular point. And then all of a sudden, Jesus waits two more days, and then he travels four more days back. That doesn't sound like love to me. That sounds very confusing to me so when he heard that Lazarus stick who was sick he stayed there two more days and then he said to his disciples let us go back to Judea now watch what happens here but rabbi they said a short while ago the Jews capital J meaning those religious leaders there tried to stone you and yet you're going back so let's talk about a second fog or a second mist it is the, the fear or the mist of retribution, where you just don't know where you are. Now, in our culture today, a lot of us don't get stoned for loving Jesus. We, we do pretty good in America. It's not too bad. But a lot of us will shut down at the water cooler, the water cooler. A lot of us will shut down online. A lot of us will not be a bold in saying our love of God is, is bigger than anything else. A lot of us will kind of be afraid of any kind of retribution for following Jesus Christ, just like the disciples were afraid of these religious leaders who were going to come after them. Are you afraid sometimes? Here's something I, I always enjoyed. I had a friend uh, that I used to eat lunch with fairly frequently. And this was one of his favorite things. We'd sit in an Applebee's or any of those kinds of places. And all of a sudden, uh, the waitress would come by and we would order. And then he would say, hey, could you tell me your name? And she'd give us her name. And he'd say, listen, right before the meal, we're going to pray. We're going to pray to Jesus Christ. And is there anything that we can pray for for you? Never once did we not get a prayer request. Every single time we did, he was bold. But a lot of us shrink back. 
who fear that there's going to be some sort of retribution and then stack on that. Now, does God still love us? Big question. Let's keep going. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. When we walk in the light of God, we actually know where we're going. It's basically what he's saying. After he said this, he went to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. Now this is a, a metaphor, and it's a common metaphor in, in a Hebrew understanding. When somebody says someone has fallen asleep, they kind of see that as death, and they, and, and they see that as, as somebody has actually passed away. But what's this? If you think you're worried about not getting it all the time, here's what the disciple said. He said, uh, I'm going to go wake him up. And the disciple said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking about his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then Jesus has to tell them plainly because they don't get it. He said, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Now, here's, here's another one. Here's another mist that we can walk in and where we wonder if God can actually, actually love us is, is when we are in the misunderstanding. I don't know if you've ever had those moments in your life where you're like, I don't, know if the, I don't really know what the Lord's saying right now. I think he's saying X, but it turns out to be Y. I think he's saying A, but it ends up being Z. And we live in this misunderstanding thing that can happen to any of us at any time. I, I had a friend one time, he was, he was dating a girl in college, but he wasn't for sure if it was the right move. And she said, listen, God told me I'm supposed to be your wife. Funny outcome, he did not marry her. So it's a funny thing, we can really think we know what the Lord's will is sometimes because we're creating a different kind of a thought and a passion. We can be walking in a misunderstanding when in fact, if we come back to a foundation, we might actually know what the understanding is. So, do you think the Lord can still love you even when you misunderstand Him? They're thinking sleep. He's thinking death. They don't get it. Now watch what happens next. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, which is a Greek word meaning double. Thomas was a twin. Said to the rest of the disciples, let us go that we may die with Him. Now, let me tell you what he's thinking right now. Here's another mist, confusion that he's walking in. You see, I think it's uh, fascinating because I've read this text. There's multiple commentators that have commentated on this and have all different ideas. This is what I believe Thomas is thinking. He thinks that the revolution has begun and that Jesus is about to kick the Romans' tails, and they're about to set up their own government. Of course, obviously, Thomas will be in the cabinet. And it's going to be so exciting and so amazing. And, and, and Jesus is all for it. And so Lazarus has started the, the, the revolution. But in the revolution, he ended up dying. So let's go join him. Let's join the revolution. Gee, I can, just in this moment, I can see Jesus go, oh, T, really? Really? I can think he's really, really confused at this point. Well, Jesus doesn't even correct him. They just leave. Have you ever lived in the fog of going the wrong direction? You ever made that kind of a decision? Or oh, I really feel like that God's calling me to do this. And you find out God was not calling you to do that. Or I really feel like God's calling me to do this, but God was not calling you to do that. You ever kind of lived in that real sense that you were going in the right direction, but it turned out to be not God's direction. You see, Thomas thought the revolution had begun, but Jesus wasn't beginning a revolution like that. I think it's fascinating that our Lord loves us in that particular, that particular moment of directionlessness.
darkness. I think that's one of the biggest ones, beloved, that when we head in a certain direction and then we find out that really wasn't God's way, that really wasn't what God wanted, we struggle to believe that He could still love us, that He still wants us, that He can really still stand with us when we're in that mist, that confusion of the wrong direction. Jesus just keeps on going. The fog of misdirection. It reminds me of one of the funniest, one of the funniest, saddest days in Dallas Cowboys history. I believe it was Leon Lett, whenever there was a fumble and he got twisted around, he picks up the fumble, it's a snow-covered field, he gets twisted around, and as he gets twisted around, he's advancing the fumble the wrong direction and ends up taking it all the way in for the other team's touchdown. His, his, the opposite team is blocking for him because his own teammates are trying to tackle him. Don't we feel that way sometimes? Like we're just going the wrong direction? And a lot of us give up when we make that mistake. When in fact, we have a God who really can walk us through this. Let's continue. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. If you know anything about decomposition, it's not good. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary and comfort them during the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Now, let's talk about one more. What about timing? What about timing? You ever felt like, God, you're just a little late. You didn't show up on time. As a matter of fact, I had an agenda and this is what I told you to do and when to do it, and you just didn't do it. I'm really confused. Do you really love me? You're too late for this. If you'd been here before he died, it would be fine. As a matter of fact, we find out later the crowd's like, well, he healed people. If he'd have got here earlier, it would have been fine. When in fact, God's timing is perfect. Perfect timing. Well, let's continue. She said, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. That's great faith right there. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, well, I know that he will rise in the resurrection of the last day. All good Jews believe this, that that would happen in the final day. Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection of life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this. We'll get back to that in a minute. Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, that being Jesus. She said and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but still uh, was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to go to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. There's the timing thing again. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her that were weeping, he was deeply moved, deeply moved. It carries this connotation like a snorting bull. Anger, hurt, and grief all wrapped up together. He says, where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Shortest verse in the Bible, the one everybody can memorize. Jesus wept. He was angry at death. He was probably angry that he was going to have to bring Lazarus back from heaven. He's angry at the hurt that everything is going by, uh, going, going in, in all the crowd. And he's just, he's just drawn back, snorting like a bull, hurt, angry, and weeping. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, 
Could not if he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? There's the timing. If you showed up right, Jesus, we would have got this done. Jesus, once more deeply moved, same word, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Just exactly what we talk about every Easter with Jesus' tomb. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor. He's been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Now, I got to tell you, this is kind of funny. Whenever uh, the Jews would embalm a body, what they would do is put spices and everything, and then they would wrap it in strips of linen, and they'd wrap everything together. They'd put about a three by three cloth over the face, and then they would wrap that. They would wrap from top to bottom to keep the mouth shut. They would keep all the limbs kind of wrapped like this, kind of mummyish, a little mummyish, and they really, really tight. That's the crazy thing. Really, really tight. A normal, healthy human male would struggle to get up with this kind of wrapping on them because it's just really, really hard to move. And then Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Now look what happens. When he had said this, Jesus called out, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, you had people that, that didn't really understand Jesus' timing. You had people that thought there was another agenda involved. You had people that were going the wrong way. Uh, had the wrong agenda. You had people that misunderstood. You had people that were completely overcome with the sense of grief or hurt. And, and in those moments, they were not getting it. They weren't getting it. And yet, what did Jesus do? I think most humans will go, you people ain't getting it. I ain't raising nobody. But he went all the way to the end with all the misunderstanding, with all the wrong agendas, with all the people not getting it, including disciples, Mary, Martha, the crowd, everybody not getting it, he goes all the way to the end and he shows them the glory of God by raising Lazarus from the dead. So let me ask you this question. Have any of those things hit you to the point that you've become so discouraged, you're mad at yourself, you're mad at your God, that you've disconnected because you just don't feel like you're getting it. Have you ever been going such the wrong direction that you're so mad at yourself? Are you so mad at God for not making it clearer that you disconnected? Have you, have you ever been in a place when you're so consumed with, with grief or the possibility of loss that you cannot see Jesus in the mist. Has that ever happened to you? And have you struggled to believe that Jesus could actually love you, forgive you, and still want to walk with you in this time? Here's what I want you to know. Jesus, in front of the disciples who didn't get it, in front of the sisters who didn't get it, in front of the crowd who didn't get it, in front of Thomas who really didn't get it, he goes all the way to the end and shows them His glory. Shows them His glory. Beloved, I want to tell you to give yourself a break. Quit checking out because you don't get it. Walk and stumble in the mist until you find the Savior. And know that he'll walk you out of it. Remember the farm I told you about? I've walked through those woods hundreds of times since I was a little boy. I know that property like the back of my hand. It is just, I know that place. But in the mist, in the confusion, not knowing the direction I was going, I have ended up walking past the most significant piece on that farm. 
and that is the big stock tank. It's about two acres, maybe three. Usually has lots of water in it. And whenever I get to that stock tank, I know where I am. I can go that south. That, I mean, I know the directions. Here's the deal. I still have to walk through the mist to get to it. And when I get there, I know where I am. You may be walking in the mist. There's a lot of confusing things going on in our world right now. You may be struggling right now. You may be wondering what direction you're going. You may be so hurt that you've checked out. Here's what I want you to know. Our God still wants to walk with you, still wants to provide you direction, and still wants to show you His glory. Even if you feel like you don't get it. Beloved, if Jesus is going to show a crowd, disciples, Thomas, sisters, who are just, if you will, lost as geese, but still with him, if he's going to show them a resurrection, he wants to show you his glory too. So here's what I want you to know. There's a big tank in the mist. His name is Jesus. Just hold on. Even when you don't understand. Just love him when you don't understand. Come back when you're in the wrong direction. When you're consumed with other things, just hold on. And if you'll find out that he still wants to show you his glory. Let's pray together. Lord, what a, a great privilege it is to be together. Even though we're in different places, we know that your spirit is right here with us. And Lord, in this amazing account of the raising of, of Lazarus, so many people not getting it. Lord, we are a lot of people who don't get it sometimes. And so, Lord, whether we are dealing with direction or misunderstanding or, or, or that we have our own agenda or that, that we're consumed by a fear of something, I ask, Lord Jesus, right now that in that mist, in that ugliness of just confusion, that we would know that you are nearby and that you, Lord Jesus, would be who we hold on to even, even when we don't, when we don't know where we're going where we can't see where we're going. And Lord, for those listening right now that really struggle with whether or not the Lord can love them through this, I pray right now your love would pervade their souls, encourage their spirits, and end the wrong tapes in their mind so that they can see the glory of God. Amen. God bless you, beloved. I encourage you as families and small groups to spend some time in the Word. Check out this passage. Grow. And go in the fact that even when you don't get it, He still loves you. Amen.